Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So on my Patreon, a lot of people are asking me how I find images to train my Loras and what that process looks like. Now, there's a lot of different ways you can do this. A lot of people are training their Loras on public data, so people who have Instagram profiles that are public or Pinterest or things like that. I don't think that's illegal, but I also don't know if it's ethical. So I try to do something a little bit different than that. So I'm going to show you how I do it. Um, this is going to be focused on WAN 2.2 as usual. Uh, I've been really focused on WAN lately, so I'm kind of a one track mind when I'm focused on something. My tutorials are going to kind of line up with whatever I'm in love with. So if you're here from the start, you probably saw me do a lot of stuff with Flux. Uh, now I'm kind of into the WAN 2.2 text to image. Now, I did a lot of research and a lot of tinkering. And the sad part about WAN 2.2 is you can't do consistent face workflows without a face trained Laura. So I'm just going to say that right off the rip, not going to bury the lead. You do need to train a Laura for consistent faces. So the image you see on the screen right now is actually two Laura's that I trained for the purpose of this of this video. So we've got two things going on here. We've got the vanilla girl aesthetic, as they call it. And then we have my influencer who I created through Mid Journey. I call her Jenny Jones. That's the keyword. So that's her right there. Okay, so that's what we're going to do today. We're going to go through the data set preparation, sourcing our data, and kind of how you can get two Lauras combined to create that consistent influencer look. So when you're getting started out, the most important thing is to really have a specific vision, vibe, pose, whatever you're trying to train, make sure you have a very clear vision of what you're trying to do. That's the most important thing. Consistency throughout your data is really going to help. Now, how do you define consistency? It really depends on what you're doing. You have to figure that out. So, for example, if you wanted to train a Laura, like the one we have here, for example, this girl taking a mirror selfie, if you wanted to create a Laura with that pose, you would find a number of images that are kind of framed the same, same kind of pose with the camera. You know, consistency, it makes a much stronger Laura. Now, as I said, I don't actually use real images from Pinterest. I just use them as inspiration. So we're gonna do the vanilla girl look, which is kind of that very clean, very maybe proper or maybe rich. A lot of light colors, you know, going out for coffee, bows and hair. You can see here, this is that's the aesthetic. So that's what we're going to do today. Now, what I like to do is save about 10, 20 images of the vibe that I like. And then you're going to go over to Mid Journey. Using Mid Journey is optional. You could actually use WAN 2.2 to create the aesthetic you want as your base images. Um, all you'd really want to do is take one of these images and then maybe throw it in ChatGPT and have it describe it for your prompt. Um, that's one way to do it. I like to do mid journey because I'm lazy, but it is expensive. So if you're looking for the mo most open source, low budget way, just fire a bunch of prompts into WAN 2.2 text to image and the workflow that I have uh, on the screen here, this one that you know. So we're actually just going to use mid journey for this. I've already done it. Um, I created a mood board with a bunch of things from uh, Pinterest. So these are my vibes, I guess you could say. So I've uploaded those. And then when you're creating your images, these aren't actually images that I'm going to use for the training. I'm going to fast forward and, you know, takes, you really got to cherry pick. But this is kind of a general idea of what you want to use. So a beautiful blonde supermodel, age 23, clean aesthetic, lounge clothes, you know, blah, blah, blah. And as you see here, the mood board is attached as well. So it knows that I kind of want that clean girl look, you know. These aren't perfect. I'm going to go through these a lot after I record this clip. Once you've done that, you're gonna create a whole bunch of images and you're gonna save them into a folder. Next, we're gonna to go to the small zero data set tool, which is available on my Patreon, uh, very useful. So this is actually our model that I created on Mid Journey. So she is completely fictional. What I did was generate a bunch of portrait photos of what I was kind of looking for based off of my Pinterest research. So I was kind of looking for that Swedish uh, blonde look. I took one photo as the reference and then I generated many more in Mid Journey as, as the reference photo. So as you can see here, I've got a little, lot of different angles of her looking away from the camera, towards the camera, different colors, um, but it's going to train a very strong face profile. So as you can see here, we got Jenny Jones training a likeness, a detailed high quality description of the woman, woman, whoops, that's a typo. Let me fix that. Her features and the surrounding environment. Okay. So 
This would prep your data. We've done this before. I'm not going to go through the LoRa training process in depth in this video. That's not what it's about. So you process all your images with the tool. You bring all of that into Ostris AI Toolkit. So we've used this before. If you want to know more about it, uh, go check out my other video. I'll put in the link here. Uh, you're going to train both. So you're going to train your aesthetic and you're also going to train your face LoRa. So the face LoRa being Jenny Jones. And then our aesthetic is going to be the clean girl. Okay. So that's going to take a few hours. So I'm going to pause the video here and I'm going to bring you to the workflow with the two finished Loras and see how it goes. Okay. So this is the image that you saw at the start of the video, you know, with some clever editing, we're back here. Um, so as you can see, it's got the clean girl aesthetic and we've got Jenny Jones. Let's go back to our Laura data set. I mean, that's Jenny Jones, right? That's my girl. There we go. Okay, so let's run one more and see how it goes. Just so you can see that we're doing it live. Let me zoom out a little bit here. And as always, this workflow is on my Patreon. It's quite good. Uh, not my creation, but one of the best uh, WAN 2.2 text to image workflows that I've used in my experience. I can usually get an image in maybe under a minute or so. I've read some people on Patreon who have tried this, maybe getting a little bit uh, slower results on their 5080s, but it's still pretty quick for one and the most photorealistic in my opinion. So that was the exact same prompt. So that's why it's quite similar. But the important part is it's retaining our face. It's really retaining it. And I'm very happy to see that. So that's a really simple way that you can get consistent faces with one 2.2 uh, while retaining the vibe that you want. Now, I'm going to show you another thing here. Now, this is another paid service. And as you know, I'm fully on board with open source generation, but there is some tools that open source just isn't quite nailing yet. Now, this is called Enhancer. So what this does is it takes your image and gives it a realistic skin texture. So as you can see here, we have the first image of Jenny Jones that we generated. I've actually run this through Enhancer. So this is the original. Now let's see what the improvement did. I haven't even looked at this yet, actually. Okay, so as you can see, it added some imperfections to her skin. She looks significantly less pretty now, in my opinion, but it looks more real. Now, I would tweak this a little bit more. Uh, you can change a lot of settings on here. I don't recommend this site, honestly. It's good if you really want to get that realism, but it's also expensive. So it's kind of up to you. Uh, if you want to absolutely nail the realism and it's a, you know a project or some kind of UGC and you need the realism to be absolutely top notch, then it's worth signing up for. I mean, it's 20, 30 bucks for uh, 1200 credits or something like that. I can't remember what it is, but, but yeah, sometimes I use this to really push my images into the lifelike area. So that's totally up to you. I just wanted to add that in, but yeah, I hope that helps. So through a combination of using Pinterest as your inspiration, using the Laura data set tool to prep the data properly, Ostris AI toolkit to actually train the Laura and then bringing it all into Comfy UI in the WAN 2.2 text to image workflow with your LoRa's loaded. Uh, that's gonna be great. I think it looks pretty good. I, honestly, I wasn't sure how this was gonna go with this LoRa, but it turned out well. So doing it live worked out again. Um, you can use the skin detailer as well. It's expensive and maybe not necessary, but uh, it'll definitely up the realism because you can see here, I mean, the skin is a little bit too smooth, but no big deal. I'm happy with the results. So I hope that helps you guys. Uh, if you have any other videos that you want to see, you can join my Patreon for free. If you want to message me, of course, the tools and stuff are for paid members only. But if you ever want to chat or have questions, you can join and ask me anything. I'm always around. All right, guys, have a good week.